Hello and welcome back to Academic Reports in English. In this lesson I'm going to look at one of the most important aspects of academic writing, uh, which is references. I'll look at what references are, uh, why we use them and how to include them in your reports. OK, let's get to it. First of all, I would just like to uh, focus on the references that are in the model report. Um, I'll just highlight them. The first one, uh, as you can see, I hope, is from Jacobson Lunderberg in 2016. The second one is Lal and Godsey, 2012. The third one is Amabile, Barsaid, Muller and Store, 2005. The next one is Hall, 2005. And the final one is Alexander et al, which means Alexander and others, in 2019. Those are all inserted into the report. And then the full reference list is at the end of the report. And I will discuss the reference list uh, in the next lesson. So the rest of this lesson is not talking about the reference list, but about the references that are inserted into the report itself. OK, let's go back to our original three questions. Of what, why and how. So firstly, what are references? Our references are facts, uh, opinions, uh, supporting details that come from other sources that you include in your report. These other sources could include academic journals and books. They could be from newspapers or government reports. And more and more, especially student reports, include references from websites, online sources. It's important to check carefully such online sources. If they are online versions of well-known journals and books, then they're probably very trustworthy. You need to be a bit more careful about, for example, an individual's blog or their own website. If you can find that online sources are cited often by other writers, that's another sign that they are probably reliable. We'll look at this in a bit more detail in Lesson 9 when I talk about something called plagiarism. Our second question is why do writers have to use references in academic reports? There are a number of important reasons and I'll just talk about three of them. First, uh, the most important reason, I think, is that references can be used to add evidence and support for your ideas. This will help the reader believe and trust in what you write. This is particularly true for facts and statistics. If, for example, you say that the crime rate is going up, many readers would say, well, uh, how do you know? Um, that's just your feeling. But if you can refer to some independent research about the changing crime rate, perhaps coming from a journal or a book, then there is a better chance the reader may trust your argument. The second reason why you want to use references is to show that you're familiar with the area or the field that you're writing about. Again, if you can show you have included trustworthy references, it shows you've done your research properly and your writing can also be trusted. A third reason, especially if you're a student, is that you can show your teacher what you have been reading. Our third question is how to include references in your report. Uh, there are two main ways that you can do this. Uh, the first is through a direct quotation and the second is through a summary or sometimes it's called a paraphrase. Let's look at direct quotation first. A direct quotation is when you copy the exact words from your reference source and then you put them inside quotation marks. Uh, these can be single or double, depending on which style you use. Uh, we'll look at style in a later lesson. You should be careful not to quote too much. Up to two or three lines of text is usually enough. Here is an example from our model report. Our first example of a reference in the model report is a direct quotation and it comes actually in the very first sentence. I'll just read it to you. 
It's quite common to hear that one of the most important skills young people will need to develop in the future is the art of collaboration. Jacobson Lundenberg, 2016, page 89. So this is actually a very short quotation, just three words, art of collaboration. And we can tell it's a quotation because at the beginning and at the end, there are quotation marks, in this case, double quotation marks. It depends on the style that you choose to use, but it could be single quotation marks as well. And then in parentheses or brackets after the quotation, we have the person who wrote it, who is called Jacobson Lundenberg in this case. And they wrote this in 2016 and it was on page 89 of the document. The art of collaboration is a very short quotation, just three words. However, if you want to quote a longer text, uh, typically more than 40 words, then you need to indent it and make it stand out separately from the rest of the text. I'll just show you how to do that. So here we have our quotation, again from Jacobson Lundenberg. So I'll highlight it and then indent it like this. And then after the quotation, the text will continue. The second way to include a reference is to make a short summary or a paraphrase. I'll cover in detail how to make a summary in our later lesson on plagiarism. For now, let us assume that you have made a short summary of your reading and you'd like to include it in your report. One way to do this is to put the summary and then add the source. Let's look at an example from our model report. Our second way of inserting a reference into an academic report is to use a summary or a paraphrase. Let's look at the body paragraph one and the very first sentence. Firstly, according to research, there are a number of advantages of collaborating over solving problems individually. Lal and Godsey, 2012. So this is very similar to our direct quotation but there are no quotation marks because we have made a summary of Lal and Godsey's ideas. The phrase according to is a very common way to introduce a summary. Let's have a look at body paragraph five next. And on the second line, it says, according to Alexander et al, 2019, there are many ways that people can overcome isolation. So these are two examples using the phrase according to, to introduce a summary or a paraphrase. They're very similar to quotations, except you can see after the name or the, and the year, there is no page number. So according to is a very common way to introduce a summary or paraphrase. We can also do this using other common verbs. Here are some examples, state, claim, write, explain. So in our first example, the original, firstly, according to research, there are a number of advantages of collaborating over solving problems individually. Lala Godsey, 2012. But in our second example, we can use a verb. Firstly, Lala and Godsey, 2012, state that there are a number of advantages of collaborating over solving problems individually. And in number three, we can use another verb. Firstly, Lal and Godsey, 2012, claim that there are a number of advantages of collaborating over solving problems individually. You can see that Lal and Godsey are become the subject of the sentence and that the uh, year in which they wrote uh, or stated or claimed uh, is in parentheses or brackets. Uh, one minor point is that the ampersand, or the uh, symbol for and in the parenthesis, actually changes to the full form of and uh, when it's not in the brackets. In this lesson, uh, we have learned about using references in our academic reports. We use these references to provide support and evidence and help our readers to trust our ideas more. We can include these outside sources into our reports by changing into our own words. This is a summary or a paraphrase. 
or by quoting them directly. And we do this by using reporting verbs or phrases or just a citation. We also include information on the year of publication, the writer's family name and the page number if that's appropriate. Look at your own reports. Have you included references? Do you paraphrase or use quotations? Have you included the writer's name and year of publication? This is a tricky area of academic writing and it does vary according to different fields. However, the advice I've given in this lesson is important whatever style your field of study uses. In our next lesson, I'll continue with references and take a look at the list of references that we provide at the end of a report. Thank you.